Good morning, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and also production of the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Wanted to speak to you guys about the seven seals of the book of Revelation. And I know I've been asked to address this subject for years and uh, just never have done it. Um, and, and I think... Uh, Perhaps I am very happy that I have not done this as of yet because of uh, probably would have been wrong. And as many other biblical commentators over the years, and I mean there are a lot of people that have written books on the seven seals, things of that nature there. And, uh, and, I, and I can't even say that as I dare to dive into this subject that I am exactly correct myself. So... Um, I just really ask you to be prayerful about what I'm going to share with you and um, let's just see how God leads on this. But it, it almost appears to me that the current situation that we see happening in the world today, uh, things that are going on, do seem to um, really begin to bring in perspective, I should say, the, the seven seals of the book of Revelation. Uh, and. So, uh, and so I want to get right into this. Uh, also, at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to be talking to you about some personal issues there that I want to share with you. So please stay all the way to the end. Listen to everything. And, uh, and, and another thing as well, we have a, yet another source, another source from Washington, D.C. that is confirming the information I've been telling you about what's going on. Uh, in the administration. And, and I do want to make clear when I say uh, the situation, the president no longer in power, things like that, um, as much as I have differed with President Trump on many issues, there are many issues I've also appreciated about President Trump. Uh, and at this time, I also would say that, uh, just reiterate this, I really believe this man needs your prayer more than any other time in his life. He does, his family does. And uh, it's a very, very difficult situation that he is in. Uh, I did watch the video uh, of where uh, our, uh, well, we actually have three sources now, all in confirmation, three witnesses uh, that this, what I have told you is true. And, uh, <clears throat> and one of those spoke about how that when he was speaking with the CEOs, uh, the coded language made it evident to them that he had lost power. So anyway, let's get right into the seals. Uh, I think it's more important. <clears throat> uh, chapter 6 of Revelation is the first seal. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I had heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him and a, had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now why anybody would ever even remotely think this would be Jesus Christ coming forth conquering and to conquer is beyond me. Uh, especially when he, as the Lamb of God, is the one opening the seal, revealing what's behind the seals. Uh, but nonetheless, I may, well, maybe I should understand that that's a possibility. But when he's given a crown, that's, that's the one where I saw this sephirot. In the sephirot tree, they have the, the crown of the sephirot tree. And it is uh, uh, kater, in Hebrew is how you say that, kater, which means crown. Uh, actually, my name Stephen in Hebrew is katreel. Uh, which means the crown of God. But that kater is not the crown of God. That is just a kater, a kater, a crown. And it is of that sephiroth tree crowning the serpent himself. And if you remember, as I said to you, uh, those of you that may have caught the video yesterday, I mentioned Revelation chapter 13. And this is, uh, to me, it kind of goes hand in hand. When he says here, um, let's see, backing up, I think, to the third, okay, in, in verse 3 of chapter 13, and I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. 
okay, the beast. Now remember, a beast is an animal, the serpent. In, in Genesis chapter 3, that deceived Adam and Eve uh, was a beast. He was the most subtle of all the beasts of the field. And it is prophesied in Genesis 3 that the woman's seed, which would be the Mashiach or the Messiah, Jesus Christ, he would be the one that would wound the head of the serpent, all right, or bruise the head of the serpent. But the scripture says in Revelation, the deadly wound would be healed. And Jesus did exactly that uh, when he came here. He crushed uh, the Pharisaic order, uh, the Talmudic order, Kabbalistic order of his day and exposed the, the uh, Pharisees of that day and Sadducees and the sages were of this Nephilim bloodline when he said in Matthew 23 that, uh, and I'll just turn there with you, and I apologize, I don't have this to where I can just share all this on the screen with you. Maybe when I edit this, I could put some of these in here for you. But in Matthew chapter 23, and um, let me just find the right verse here where he says, um, I think, let's see, moving down here. Uh, yeah, here we go, verse 33. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? All right. In the Hebrew Matthew, he calls them a seed of vipers, which the word generation is a family of vipers. Uh, and we know that this is, can be confirmed if you go into Ezra, which we find that the priest and the Levites had mingled their seed. All right, mingled the bloodline. They, they took a holy bloodline and mixed it in with the people of, of the lands, the Hittites, the Perzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, right? That's what they had done, which they were, according to Numbers chapter 13, the last verse, I think that's verse 23, they were of a Nephilim bloodline. Enoch was one. He was a Canaanite, right? And just the mere fact that Enoch is, is mentioned, he's not just Nephilim, his father was a Nephilim. It literally uses the word Nephilim uh, about him. And his children were Nephilim. By the way, they're not sterile. So don't get that crazy idea in your mind. The very fact that Enoch, was, his father was a Nephilim, and he could produce sons, shows that he was not sterile. And Jesus also confirming that in Matthew 23, when he said they were a generation of vipers. All right, so when we're looking at Revelation 13, that deadly wound is healed. Uh, of course, the Romans carried out the judgment of Christ on 70 AD, destroyed the temple. Um, uh, actually, even Titus, according to the historian, I think it was Josephus Flavius, it actually uh, mentions that um, they destroyed it themselves. Uh, that He said, let the, not this be put to my charge when they burned the temple. But uh, at any rate, let's move on here. And we see that uh, in verse 4, chapter 13, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, woe, excuse me, who, not woe, but who is alike unto the beast and who is able to make war with him. Now, Right now, Jonathan Kahn is talking, he's having this conference called the Return Conference. It sounds a lot like uh, Mark Biltz and Yitzhak Shapira's conference. Uh, Paul Begley also talking about that I'm just lost and that uh, what's going to happen is Trump's going to reopen the nation and they're going to have a revival. Well, you're going to have to do the testing, and then you're going to have to be vaccinated, and then there's going to be a third uh, type of uh, jail thing that will be put into your system in order to be able to participate in the economy. It's interesting that these ministers are not brave enough to tell you that that's a sign of the mark of the beast. You can't buy or sell, saving you take this mark. No other time in history have we ever had it to where they're uh, making mandatory some type of a mark of a system here uh, in order for you to participate in the economy. All right. Uh, 
to where you physically have to take something in your own body to be a, to be a part of this economy and obviously setting it up right before your eyes there. So, uh, so at any rate, I, I really strongly encourage you ministers. Uh, I'm not here to beat up on you today, but uh, all of you that are out there, uh, Paul Bagley been a friend for many, many years, but I encourage you, you really search the scripture. Drop the 501c, uh, which I, I don't, I, you know, get rid of that idea altogether. I mean, man, and listen, I, I have to have a compassion too in one way because I realize a lot of these ministers are caught up in that system because they thought it was a good thing, didn't know any better, you know, we'd, we'd totally failed to realize where Jesus, when it come time to pay him the taxes, just paid the taxes and was done with it. He wasn't going to be bound to the government. But I've got many a good friend that are ministers that are caught up in that system. I remember Chuck Baldwin saying it took him years to unravel all of that. So maybe I can't hold these guys... Uh, so hard to the grindstone when it comes to that. But nonetheless, you're going to have to get out of it if you're going to ever speak the truth. And I do know that. These guys are forced to not being able to say the truth. Uh, but then again, they don't have to parrot everything either. They could just preach simple gospel and let these things go. But they're not. They're going to have to come against me and what we're saying, me and my wife, uh, in order to, 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 I guess, to keep the status they have. At any rate, let's move on. There was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. See, everything is given unto him, just like over here in the first seal. The crown is given unto him. So the world governments give their power unto the beast. And he opened his mouth, blasphemed against God, blasphemed his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. <clears throat> all right. Well, Jesus speaks about, the apostles all spoke about, we are the temple of God. The body has thou prepared me, which was Christ, but we are his body. And so therefore, that's the temple. So that's the one they speak against. Right. So there you are right there. He goes forth conquering to conquer. And then he says, and I saw and behold a white horse set on that. Okay, we got that. Then we go into the second seal, verse three of chapter six. When we had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. That's definitely going, and, and, and not just to mention the fact that it's about to really go on globally, with this alleged pandemic, and of course, what does the pandemic do? It brings about a chain of events. People will turn against each other. So power is given him to do all these things. Because notice, right, that he says, given to him that set there on to take peace from the earth. Peace. Jesus Christ is the peace. He is the shalom. And when you remove Jesus Christ out of the equation and you begin to bring in this reptilian race that is now controlling the White House and as well as controlling global governments around the world, you take peace, you take Christ out of the system there. And now you have injected into it what? And then it says, and they shall kill one another. And that's exactly what's happening. And what are you going to see happen when people, when they've lost their jobs, unemployment rate, they're saying 10%. It's got to be higher than that, though. They're just not telling you the true figures yet. When these people have no way to be able to buy food anymore because they have no money, then they're going to start robbing one another. They, they're, they're, they have created the scenario that will cause the people to kill one another. Then they'll enact martial law. Then more death will follow. And of course, my own sources from the Middle East have shared with me how that that's exactly what they intend to do here in America. And even my sources, many, I have many sources in Washington, all confirming 
They want to get rid of the undesirables. Texas, you will be targeted. In fact, one of my friends said to me, people who live in Texas should flee Texas. And yet everybody thought that they should go to Texas. And I've got precious friends there. Sister Rosa, one of those, very precious sister. And, and, the, and the group that she has there, God bless you all over there. And so many more of you in Texas, we love you very much. Very sad to see these things coming. And many of them, there's no way they can leave. No way they can leave. Um, they're going to do ethnic, ethnic cleansing. You're going to see that, right? They have no regard to the human race. So we go on. That was the second seal that we just read there. All right. So let's go into the third seal, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Well, that's kind of interesting if you look at the way they're doing these things right now with this new globalist agenda. They're going to just barely give you out a little bit of food. This is what uh, Celeste was saying to my wife on the phone yesterday. Such valuable information that you need to be hearing, and you will hear. And, uh, and as Celeste was sharing that, how that they're going to portion it out so tiny, as if you were in the Holocaust and, and going through what uh, the, the, the Jewish families that went through the Holocaust went through. Not just Jews either. Prisoners of war, dissidents, uh, political prisoners, they were all being treated such as that during, during uh, Germany's Nazi reign there, right? But then he says, hurt not the oil and the wine. Now there's a lot of ways we could look at that, but some, I know it's been said that, of course, we know, we know scripturally, oil uh, represents the, the, you know, the spirit of God, uh, uh, you know, uh, wine, etc., you know, different things like revelation. But I will have to say to you, though, when it says, hurt not the oil and the wine, these are things that are produced of the earth. And oddly enough, the agenda that they have, this new globalist agenda, is that we're not to harm the things of the earth anymore. When, and, and it's not, see, God gave of the trees of the earth to produce those things, like the olive tree is a fruit bearing tree. In fact, it's written in the Word of God that you're not to cut down a tree that produces fruit, as long as it's producing fruit. So like when Israel goes into the Palestinian uh, areas there uh, and they cut down their olive groves, they are in violation of Almighty God's Word. You were allowed to take a tree, such as a pine tree, something that does not bear fruit, to build a home with or something of that nature there, but never a fruit bearing tree. So when it says, hurt not the oil and the wine, of course, the grapes from the, the, from the vineyard and the oil from the olive tree. And what are they saying? That the people are not going to be allowed to, to, uh, to you're not going to be allowed to buy seeds. You're not going to be allowed to have things that are harvested from the earth, but instead they're going to give you worms and bugs to eat. So when we look at the third seal in light of what their plans are, we begin to see a different picture altogether. Going into the fourth seal, chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 7, And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice, the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and the beast of the, of the earth. You know, when I read this one right here and I think about how that death, of course, Satan himself is death, right? Hell followed with him. They have opened up, as it were, the Pandora box, as uh, one of my sources called it. And they've allowed all these demons to come into this earth and they're allowing them to come once again. When Jesus Christ had bound Satan, bound the devil, and now the lid is being pulled off of hell. Why? Because a lot of these evangelical ministers have yielded power back over unto the beast. 
And you know what gets me? I sit there and I read these comments of you men that belittle women. Like you say things about my wife, you know, she shouldn't be preaching, she should be in the kitchen and things like that. Where do you think the leadership of men have gotten this world into? Have you ever even considered that? Men are the ones that are running the White House. Men are the ones that the majority of the pulpits are ran by men. And men are the ones that have caved in and given in over to Satan and have given the power back into the beast. It wasn't a woman. It was men. When Jesus Christ was taken to the cross, every one of his disciples, with the exception of John, fled and left. The ones that were there on that day when Christ was being crucified were the women. The ones that stood for the truth were the women. And then you act like you're somebody. And I'll tell you something, there's no way the research that goes into the work that we do could it be done without my wife. She digs deeper than anybody I've ever known. And then to say the things that you say, You should really be ashamed of yourself. I would imagine less than probably 1% are women ministers in the pulpit. Look at all the false doctrines that have come out. Darby and Schofield and, and every cult there is practically started by a man. You know, in the sight of God, there is neither male nor female. A soul is a soul. And we do good to remember that. So the fourth seal, when death came, hell followed with him, and power was given unto them, which is those demons. And again, it's given unto them. They had no right to take over this planet, had not somebody in power ceded that power over to them. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger, and which is what they're doing and they're going to do. They're going to starve you to death. They're going to kill you with the sword and with death and with the beast of the earth. And as I said in the broadcast yesterday, why does it say with the beast of the earth? Remember when Jesus, he came to the maniac of Gadaria. And he cast those demons out. And of course the demons spoke to him and said, Suffer us to go into the swine. And he did, showing that those devils had the ability to inhabit an animal uh, uh, creature. And now these demons are let loose once again. The soul of these Nephilim that were killed during the flood, according to the book of Enoch. I mean, that's just a, something I throw out there. But nonetheless, they are now going to inhabit animals. And this is why the scripture says even the birds will eat your flesh from your body while you're yet alive. Think about these things, friend. And this is what's happening because somebody let down the bars and the sheep got out and the wolves have now entered in. And we go to the fifth seal and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Who's dwelling on the earth? Those demons. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants, also their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So there's more martyrs coming that will stand for Jesus Christ. 
And the sixth seal, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man and hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come who shall be able to stand when I read this and of course this has been on my mind for quite some time already that this is what we're about to see and with all this going on this is what's interesting Right now, these, these Nephilim bloodlines that are making ready for, their, for their, their father of death to come, Satan, and all of his demons to be poured out on this earth. And at the same time, while that's going on, I've been told by those that are in the inside uh, circles, the scientists, in fact, uh, that work with these, that we are now about to see cataclysmic changes on the earth starting in May, you'll begin to notice temperature changes. You'll begin to notice weather changes. Then earthquakes and everything else will begin to just magnify through the months ahead. Uh, even now, when it was like, I don't know, in the 80s uh, yesterday, uh, in the 40s this morning. Totally unseasonal weather, right? But it's going to really pick up storms and tornadoes and, and hurricanes and typhoons and everything else is going to go. And by September, there won't be a man, woman, or child on the earth, as I was told, that will not know that something major is taking place. And then we will go through what is called a debris field. And now there are those that are saying, too, that this comet, they call it Atlas. I'm wondering if it's not the one that uh, was spoken by the Chilean astronomer, uh, uh, for, uh, for, for, uh, Fernando... Uh, I think Ferrado, I believe is his name, uh, that passed away back in 2001 that said that it was six times the size of Jupiter. Some are saying that Atlas is twice the size of Jupiter, but it's a comet planet, goes into an elliptical orbit. But when I think about this, and I don't know if this is the case or not, but when it goes and it circles and it comes back around, I'm wondering if it doesn't get between the sun and the earth, and that's why the, uh, the sun becomes black as sackcloth of hair. Because... So, you know, we get the moon that gets between the, uh, the sun and the earth, and we can get a, a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse, whatever they call that. I'm not one of those kind of guys, so I don't know the right terminology. But put something six times the size of Jupiter between the sun and the earth. Not only would it make the sun go completely black, might even make the get a red moon out of that one there, but imagine what the chaos would happen on this planet. And of course, we already know the elites have dug all these huge caves into the mountains to go hide in and things like that all over the planet they did this they took the gold out of the vault out of fort knox to pay for all of this and guess what they're going to get there and i'm even being told now by one source there that they're afraid to go underground because they didn't expect the radiation absorption of the earth and all these climatic changes that are cracking up even their caves but they'll get in there and they'll cry out for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon them but then I'm also told about the debris field and how that it'll be uh, meteorites and everything striking the earth. It's coming a very serious day, friends, very serious day. And if there's ever a time, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I invite you to know him today. If you don't know him, fall to your knees and give your life to Jesus Christ because there's no other hope, no other time in all the history of mankind than today that we must know who our Savior truly is. And let me tell you something, and don't just stop there. You want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to know that you've come in such communion with Him that He has come to you personally and you have had a one-on-one -on -one experience with Him. And let me just say also, as we get to, an, uh, there's one other one, the seventh seal. Let me just speak quickly about this. We go all the way down to chapter 8. 
and later maybe I'll go through the commentary of chapter 7 there where we start uh, where it goes from the sixth seal and, and speaks of other things but in the seventh seal when he had opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour and I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto to him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke and the incense which came from the prayers of the saints ascended up before God and the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it onto the earth. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake. And then it goes into the trumpets. You know, the one thing that I thought about because of the silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour is those prayers. And I say that because I had a good friend of mine that was visited by an angel one day and the angel asked her if she wanted to see heaven and he took her by the hand and took her up into heaven. And I'll never forget her telling me that when she was there and she said everything there is different than what you have here. She said even the rocks are praising and worshiping the Lord. She said the leaves on the trees as the wind blows. She said they beat their little their little leaves together and they're worshiping the Lord. She said the, the water sings and she said everything is in harmony, worshiping Him. And she said, and I became so overwhelmed at being in this place here with everything worshiping. She said that I begin to worship the Lord and she said I was just worshiping Jesus and giving Him praise. And she said, and when I began to worship, she said, the one thing I noticed that everything, she said, I heard a voice come from the throne and said, let everything be still. And the sister's name was Anna, very precious woman, an elderly woman, since gone to be with him. And I'll never forget afterwards, she looked at the angel and she said, or no, the angel, I think she said, the angel said to her after she finished worshiping the Lord, she said, this is what happens. Anytime one of his children begin to worship him in prayer, he says it all, he tells everything to remain silent. Because, as he said, Anna, my daughter, is speaking now. And so I've kind of wondered if maybe when we see the silence in heaven for the space of a half an hour, maybe the saints are really praying at this time with all the things that are happening on the earth and he receives their prayers. That's a conjecture. And most of what I said to you is conjecture. I don't know if these things are really so. I'm just seeing what I'm seeing happening and how that it seems to parallel the seals that are, that are written in the book of Revelation. You pray about it and we'll see where it goes. And once again, let me remind you, those of you out there, you know, my wife is going through a tremendous, tremendous lot because the, the, as she does this research, that's a lot of information to take in. And it's a lot on the human mind and the human psyche. The last thing she needs is to hear all this criticism, especially from men that think that women have no voice, no say. You know, when Jesus chose his 12 disciples, his closest companion was Mary Magdalene. That was his closest companion, a sister. But he also was dealing with a patriarchal type of system. And I know that many of you have never listened to the messages that I've done on my channel. If you go to my YouTube channel, I have a message, many messages that I've put up about women and showed the correct translations of the words of Paul because even Paul was not against women, just as Jesus. You never see Jesus belittling women. And so neither should we. And to think that only men have it right, as I said before, men mess up more than, in fact, that's the reason we're in the condition we're in today. So we need to think about these things. Many great women of God written in the Bible we need to remember that. And remember also, it took a woman to believe in order for our Savior to come to earth. 
Abraham even doubted. Sarah doubted. Sarah laughed. Abraham laughed. God made him name his son Yitzhak. He laughs because they didn't believe. It was attributed to him for faith afterwards. But if it hadn't have been for that little woman named Mary that believed unconditionally the Word of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, could have never been formed in a womb. Think about these things. One thing I will not tolerate is that. Because I know what the truth is. You know, I'd rather you say nothing at all than to criticize my wife because she is a part of me. Thank you for listening. And again, I encourage you, if you don't know Jesus Christ today, find Him. I want to pray with you as we close here. Heavenly Father, we're living in an hour, Father God, that is so, so tremendous. A lot of people are nervous. And I do know, Father, that perfect love, as you said in your word, perfect love casteth out all fear. And as we come to the closing hours of humanity on this earth, it's a glorious time because we're coming to the time of the resurrection. We're coming to the time where we get to meet our Savior face to face. And we shouldn't think that this is something unusual. These are the things that the apostles and the men and women of God had to face back in the times when you were on, our, on earth then, Lord. They, every one, gave their lives for what they believed. They, every one, went down testifying that you were the same yesterday, today, and forever. Help us to stand boldly in these closing hours. And if there's one out there, Father God, that doesn't know you as Savior, I just ask, Lord Jesus, that you would reach down, touch that heart, hear their prayers, Father God. Let the prayers go up even now, Father, that souls will be saved. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Don't forget, if you're hearing this video somewhere else, our website is israelinewslive.org. Uh, we don't write a lot on there, but all the videos are posted there. Sometimes we do write articles there. Patreon also is another place you can see things. Sometimes we post over there more uh, pertinent information that can't really get shared here. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't subscribed to this channel because a lot of times they remove people. Uh, here lately it looks like with uh, YouTube probably having to lay off so many people they're not able to monitor us as well so the channel is moving along the way it used to move. Thank you. God bless you. And thank you for watching.